Lesson 11.3, Classify Quadrilaterals. We can classify and compare quadrilaterals by their number of sides, types of angles, and the relationship shared by opposite sides and opposite angles. All quadrilaterals have four sides and four angles. We have general quadrilaterals that are just a shape that has four sides and four angles. We have trapezoids. We have rectangles, which are special parallelograms. We have squares, which are special parallelograms. We have parallelograms, which are special trapezoids. And we have rhombuses that are special parallelograms. And we'll talk about why they're special in a minute. So remember from video 11.1, .1, congruent means having the same size and shape. And parallel lines are lines in the same plane that never intersect. They never cross each other. And they're always the same distance apart. They run side by side like that. They never meet. They never cross. And they're always the same distance apart. And perpendicular lines intersect, so they do cross. And they form four right angles. They make four right angles in each inside corner there. There are five special types of quadrilaterals. We can classify quadrilaterals by their properties, such as parallel sides and perpendicular sides. A general quadrilateral has four sides and four angles. But we have parallelograms, trapezoid, rectangle, rhombus, and square. A parallelogram is a special trapezoid whose opposite sides are parallel, and the opposite sides are congruent. They have the same length. And sometimes a parallelogram is a rectangle when it has four right angles. So a parallelogram needs to have two pairs of parallel sides and two pairs of sides of equal length. So a square fits that. Here's this side's parallel to this one. That's one pair. And this side's parallel to this one. That's another pair. And it's got two pairs of sides of equal length. And a rectangle fits it. The top is parallel to this line at the bottom. And this line is parallel to this line. And these two are the same length. And these two are the same length. And a rhombus fits. It's got parallel sides. This one is parallel to this one. And this one is parallel to this one. And it's got two pairs of sides of equal length. So they fit as parallelograms. And a parallelogram is a special trapezoid because a trapezoid has to have at least one pair of parallel sides. And the parallelogram goes above and beyond that by having two pairs of parallel sides. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with at least one pair of parallel sides. And sometimes a trapezoid is a parallelogram when its opposite sides are parallel and the opposite sides are the same length. But a parallelogram is always a trapezoid because trapezoids have at least one pair of parallel sides. So these are all parallelograms, but this one's not because it needs to have two pairs of parallel sides. And that side and that side are not parallel, are they? The top and the bottom are, but the left and right side aren't. So it's not a parallelogram, but it is a trapezoid. The other ones are trapezoids and parallelograms. A rectangle has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. These are parallel. And then this is another pair that's parallel. And two pairs of congruent sides. These are congruent and these are congruent. They also have four right angles and four pairs of perpendicular sides. Here's a pair of perpendicular sides. Here's a pair of perpendicular sides. Here's another one, and here's another one. And rectangles are special parallelograms because they fulfill the requirements to be a parallelogram, but they go beyond that by having four right angles. A rhombus has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel and four equal side lengths, so it's always a parallelogram. And a rhombus is a special parallelogram because it fulfills the requirements to be a parallelogram, 
but it goes beyond that by having four congruent sides. And sometimes a rhombus is a square when it has four right angles. So you can see that these are both rhombuses. A square is considered a rhombus, and a rhombus can be considered a square. A rhombus is a square when it has four right angles. A square has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel, four congruent sides, and four right angles. And a square is a rectangle, rhombus, and trapezoid because it fits each requirement for those quadrilaterals. And a square is a special parallelogram because it fulfills the requirements for a parallelogram, but it goes beyond that by having four congruent sides and four right angles. Squares are a lot of things, aren't they? The rectangle, rhombus, and trapezoid, and the considered a parallelogram. So for quadrilaterals, we've got a square, a rectangle, a rhombus, a trapezoid, and we've got parallelograms. These are special parallelograms because they fulfill all the properties of parallelograms, but have their own extra properties. So I'll show you how to use a Venn diagram. This is called a Venn diagram. It shows relationships among sets of things. It's a sorting tool. And the biggest circle represents the biggest category. So this big circle represents whole numbers that are less than 10. So every number that is in this big circle, even here, these are all numbers that are less than 10, whole numbers. And then each smaller circle represents subcategories. Those are categories inside of a category. So we have whole numbers that are less than 10, and here we have prime numbers, and here we have odd numbers. And the overlapping circles, they represent shared properties. So one is an odd number, two is a prime number, three is a prime number and an odd number, so it's in the overlapping section. Four is not prime or odd, but it is a whole number less than 10, so it's up here. Five is a prime number and an odd number, so it's in the middle. Six is not prime or odd, so it's up here. Seven is prime and odd, so it's in the middle. Eight is not prime or odd, it's just a whole number less than 10. And nine is an odd number. So it's sorted all the whole numbers less than 10 into categories. And we can do this with quadrilaterals. So for our biggest circle, we've got quadrilaterals. And these fall in the category of quadrilateral. Then we have trapezoids, and these fall in the category of trapezoid. Then we have parallelograms, and that's a parallelogram. Then we have rhombus and rectangle. And look, square is a rhombus, it's a rectangle. It's a parallelogram, it's a trapezoid, and it's a quadrilateral. It's all of them. And this means that a rhombus is a parallelogram, a trapezoid, and a quadrilateral. And a rectangle is a parallelogram, trapezoid, and quadrilateral. And a parallelogram is a trapezoid and a quadrilateral, and a trapezoid is a quadrilateral. So that's a Venn diagram. Helps us sort and classify. So be very careful when you're classifying these quadrilaterals. I'm going to have copies of these posters, these cards, on my Joanne School Facebook photo section. In our next lesson, 11.4, we're going to be doing some word problem solving, and we're going to talk about properties of two-dimensional figures. Have a wonderful day. Keep trying hard. I'm proud of you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.